Jung Carl Carl Jung was an early follower of Sigmund Freud and shared Freud's interest in the unconscious. He was an active member of the Vienna Psychoanalytic Society. When the International Psychoanalytical Society was formed in 1910, Jung became president at Freud's request. In 1912, Jung openly criticized Freud's theory of the Oedipus complex and its emphasis on psychosexual development during a lecture tour of America. The following year, this led to an irrevocable rift between Freud and Jung, and the latter went on to develop his own version of psychoanalytic theory. Most of the tenets of Jung's analytic psychology reflect his theoretical differences from Freud. Although Jung agreed with Freud that a person's past and childhood experiences determine his or her future behavior, Jung believed that we are also shaped by our future and aspirations. Differences Jungian and Freudian Psychoanalysis Theory of the Libido Jung disagreed with Freud about the role of sexuality in development. He believed that the libido was not only sexual energy, but also other psychic energy. For Jung, the purpose of psychic energy was to motivate the individual in a number of important ways, spiritual, intellectual, and creative. This energy was also an individual's motivating source to seek pleasure and reduce conflict. Theory of the Unconscious Like Freud and Eric Erikson, Jung viewed the psyche as a number of separate but interacting systems. The three most important were the ego, the personal unconscious, and the collective unconscious. According to Jung, the ego represents the conscious mind because it includes the thoughts, memories, and emotions of which a person is aware. The ego is largely responsible for feelings of identity and continuity. Like Freud, Jung emphasized the importance of the unconscious in relation to personality. However, he proposed that the unconscious consists of two layers. The first layer, called the personal unconscious, is essentially the same as Freud's version of the unconscious. The personal unconscious contains information forgotten in time and also repressed memories. Jung outlined an important characteristic of the personal unconscious, complexes. A complex is a collection of thoughts, feelings, attitudes, and memories centered on a single concept. The more elements associated with a complex, the greater its influence on the individual. Jung also believed that the personal unconscious is much closer to the surface than Freud suggested and Jungian therapy is less concerned with repressed childhood experiences. It is the present and the future that, according to Jung, were key to both the analysis of neurosis and its treatment. The Collective Unconscious By far the most important difference between Jung and Freud, however, is Jung's notion of the collective, or transpersonal, unconscious. This is his most original and controversial contribution to personality theory. The collective unconscious is a universal version of the personal unconscious, which contains mental patterns or memory traces that are shared with other members of the human species. These ancestral memories, which Jung called archetypes, are represented in various cultures by universal themes as expressed in literature, art, and dreams. According to Jung, the human mind has innate qualities that have been inculcated in it as a result of evolution. These universal predispositions stem from our ancestral past. Fear of the dark or of snakes and spiders could be examples. This idea has been revived in the theory of prepared conditioning. More important than isolated tendencies, however, are those aspects of the collective unconscious that have developed into separate subsystems of the personality. Jung called these ancestral memories and images archetypes. Jungian archetypes. Jungian archetypes are defined as images and themes arising from the collective unconscious as proposed by Carl Jung. Archetypes have universal meanings across cultures and can show up in dreams, literature, art, or religion. Jung believes that symbols from different cultures are often very similar because they emerge from archetypes shared by the entire human race and part of our collective unconscious. For Jung, our primitive past is the foundation of the human psyche directing and influencing current behavior. Jung claimed to identify a large number of archetypes, but pay particular attention to four. Jung labeled these archetypes as the self, the persona, the shadow, and the animus, the persona. The persona is the outward face we present to the world. It hides our real selves and Jung describes it as the conformity archetype. 
This is the public face or role that someone presents to others as someone who is different from who we really are, such as an actor. The animus, another archetype is the animus. The animus is the mirror image of our biological sex. That is the unconscious feminine side in men and the masculine tendencies in women. According to Joan, each sex or gender manifests attitudes and behaviors of the other on the basis of centuries of coexistence. A woman's psyche contains masculine aspects, the animus archetype, and a man's psyche contains feminine aspects, the anima archetype. The shadow. The next archetype is the shadow. This is the animal side of our personality, like the id and Freud. It is the source of both our creative and our destructive energies. In line with evolutionary theory, Jung's archetypes may reflect predispositions that once had survival value. The self. Finally, there is the self, which gives a sense of unity in the experience. For Jung, the ultimate goal of each individual is to attain a state of self-being, similar to self-actualization, and in this respect, Jung, like Erikson, is moving towards a more humanistic orientation. Alienation and Civilization In his book, The Undiscovered Self, Jung argued that many of the problems of modern life are caused by man's gradual alienation from his instinctive base. One aspect of this is his view on the meaning of the anima and the animus. Jung argues that these archetypes are products of the collective experience of men and women living together. However, in modern Western civilization, men are discouraged from living their feminine side and women from expressing masculine tendencies. For Jung, the result was that the full psychological development of both sexes was undermined. Together with the prevailing patriarchal culture of Western civilization, this has led to the total devaluation of feminine qualities and the predominance of the persona has elevated insincerity to a way of life unchallenged by millions in their daily lives. Critical Evaluation Jung's 1947-1948 ideas had not been as popular as Freud's. This may be because he did not write for laymen, and so his ideas were not as widely disseminated as Freud's. It could also be because his ideas were a bit more mystical and obscure, and less clearly explained. Mystical Speculation In general, modern psychology has not looked at Jung's theory of archetypes kindly. Ernest Jones, Freud's biographer, relates that Jung descended into a pseudo-philosophy from which he never emerged. To many, Jung's ideas, his research into ancient myths and legends, and his interest in astrology and fascination with Eastern religions seem more like New Age mystical speculation than a scientific contribution to psychology. Jung himself claims that the constant recurrence of symbols from mythology and personal therapy, and in the fantasies of people with psychosis, supports the idea of an innate collective cultural residue. In line with evolutionary theory, Jung's archetypes may reflect predispositions that once had survival value. Jung argued that human responses to archetypes resemble instinctive responses in animals. One criticism of Jung is that there is no evidence that archetypes are biologically based or resemble animal instincts. Rather than being seen as purely biological, more recent research suggests that archetypes arise directly from our experiences and are reflections of linguistic or cultural characteristics. Personality theory. However, Jung's work has also contributed to mainstream psychology in at least one important way. He was the first to distinguish the two main attitudes or orientations of personality, extroversion and introversion. He also identified four basic functions, thinking, feeling, observing, and intuition, which when cross-classified, yield eight personality types. Psychologists such as Hans Eysenck Raymond Cattell and Myers slash Briggs later elaborated on this. In addition to being a cultural icon for generations of psychology students, Jung also put forward ideas that were very important to the development of modern personality theory. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit notification bell so you will be notified whenever we upload a new video. Remain better.